The Nobel Prize in Chemistry, which I always await with great anticipation, was this year awarded to Benjamin List of the Max Planck Institute in Germany and David Macmillan, a professor at Princeton University. They were recognized for developing, quote, an ingenious tool for building molecules. Well, life is all about building molecules, isn't it? Our bodies are constantly building proteins, fats, neurotransmitters, and hundreds of other compounds that are critical to life. In academic laboratories around the world and in industrial facilities, chemists focus on synthesizing drugs and polymers, cosmetics, dyes, agrochemicals, and a zillion other substances that we use on a regular basis. Many of these reactions rely on the use of catalysts. These are substances that speed up chemical reactions, but they themselves remain unchanged. Well, List and Macmillan independently developed catalysts that allow certain chemical reactions to be carried out more effectively. One of the first examples ever noted of catalysis was back in the 1800s. And I'm wearing glasses today for a reason. I want to protect my eyes because I'm actually going to do some chemistry for you. Hydrogen peroxide, liquid you're familiar with. I have a little bit of that in the flask. And I'm going to add a metal catalyst to this. And look what happens. As soon as I add it, there's a chemical reaction. Quickly, it produces oxygen and water. But the water vapor condenses to form a cloud. So what you are really seeing here is a catalytic reaction. And indeed, it's a very impressive reaction. It is highly exothermic. It produces a great deal of heat, as you can see, because the water actually becomes to, uh, gets to boiling. Anyway, since the discovery of uh, such catalytic reactions, many catalysts have been developed. But there are issues with some of these. For example, enzymes. The biological catalysts are complex protein molecules, and they don't work very well outside of living systems. The metal catalysts are very, very good. However, it's difficult to work with them because they have to be kept away from oxygen and from moisture. They become deactivated. And furthermore, when you're talking about medicinal compounds or about food processes, you can't have any residual metals left behind in the product. Some of these metals are actually uh, heavy metals and they are potentially uh, toxic. Doctors List and Macmillan developed simple organic molecules called organocatalysts that have a myriad of potential uses. They can make possible reactions that would not occur in their absence. And uh, they play a very important role in what we call green chemistry. This is the attempt to use the fewest possible reagents, maximize yield, minimize side products, and carry out processes with the fewest possible reactions. And uh, these organocatalysts make that possible. Furthermore, they allow for the possibility of what is known as asymmetric synthesis. And this is very important when it comes to molecules that can exist in what we call non-superimposable mirror images. For example, our hands are non-superimposable images. You cannot take your left hand and put it on top of the right or vice versa. They do not match. The thumbs, of course, don't match. Similarly, you have molecules which are mirror images of each other, but they are non-superimposable. As you see, the green and the blue match but the white and the red do not. It turns out that some pharmaceutical products can exist in these two mirror image forms. We call them enantiomers. And sometimes one is active and the other one is not. Furthermore, the inactive one may be toxic. So it's very important when it comes to medicines to have only the pure enantiomer. And this is made possible by the asymmetric uh, synthesis, and that is in turn made possible by these organocatalysts. So, uh, obviously, these catalysts are very important, and it has been said that about 35% of all of the products and processes that are used in the world today make use of, uh, of catalysts. And that's why it is not difficult to understand why doctors List and Macmillan have been awarded the Nobel Prize. Uh, they started their work back in the year 2000, and their work already has impacted our life in numerous ways and will continue to do so in the future. And that 
is our cup of joe for today.